According to some historians, modern radar technology arrived in Canada in a briefcase during the early stages of the Second World War under the veil of secrecy. In 1940, members of the British Technical and Scientific Mission, led by scientist Henry Tissard, came to North America with the intent of sharing military research secrets with their counterparts in Canada and the United States. The idea was to further develop and produce war essential technology. Their most precious cargo was the greatly improved cavity magnetron, which arrived by ship in Halifax Harbor on September 6th, 1940, in the luggage of one of the mission's scientists. Soon after arrival, high-ranking members of the Canadian and US government, as well as top researchers in both countries, were briefed by the British delegation. The multi-resonator system increased radar transmission pulse power almost a hundredfold at 10 centimeter wavelengths. Yet, these cavity magnetrons were small enough to meet the requirements of airborne service and suitable for quantity production. Looking back, its invention had a dramatic effect on wartime technology development. It triggered an extraordinary R&D effort for until then unheard of centimeter wavelength radars with much increased resolution and range. Among a number of officers seconded during the war to the Royal Navy was a Canadian student of geophysics in his mid twenties. Larry Morley gained firsthand experience with the new radar imaging and ranging capabilities aboard a British warship on the Atlantic. This wartime know-how was going to serve him well later in his civilian career as founder and first director of the Canada Centre for Remote Sensing during the 1970s. In Canada, Important personal ties forged as a result of the Tessaric mission during the war. The cavity magnetron was a major factor in persuading government to fund the development and production of radar equipment. This program created awareness of radar at the highest political levels. It also had the effect of rapidly improving knowledge and technical training in Canada since there was little prior knowledge and experience in developing or manufacturing such sophisticated electronic equipment. During the Cold War period, much of the technological development in the field of radar took place in the military domain. Imaging radar took a significant step forward during the 1950s and 60s with the adoption of the synthetic aperture radar concept for aircraft-based systems in the United States. There was little spillover initially from military to civilian applications, let alone knowledge of a top secret development of satellite-borne radar imaging experiment in the United States. As we now know, Canada received its baptism with SAR illumination from space in 1964, during the months of December. The brief proof of concept satellite mission codenamed QUIL successfully acquired a series of image swaths over the United States. However, some of these swaths and their northernmost termination also brushed Canadian waters and territory, notably in the region of the Great Lakes. In 